Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to achieve this frame effect on your objects in Adobe Illustrator by applying gradients to a stroke. I'm going to move to a new document, and we'll begin by creating a rectangle. I'll get the Rectangle Tool, Keyboard Shortcut M, and click on the artboard to open up the Rectangle dialog box. I'll type in 3 inches for the width, tab down, type in 4 inches for the height, and then say OK by pressing the Return key. Now I'll move to the Properties panel, and in the Appearance area, I'll click on the Color Fill icon, and I'm going to remove the fill color. And then I'll go to the Stroke area, and I'm going to increase the stroke to 30 points and press my Return key. Next, I need to move over to the left toolbar and make sure that the stroke icon is in front of the fill icon, which it is. If it's not, all you need to do is click on the stroke icon and that'll bring it to the front, which allows us to edit the stroke rather than the fill. Now I'll get the gradient tool, which is also on the left toolbar. This is what it looks like, but I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut G and then press the return key to open up the gradient panel. Now Illustrator by default has a gradient that begins with white and ends with black and we see this on the gradient slider. I want to add some colors to the slider because I don't want my gradient to be black and white. So I'll double click right under the far left side of the gradient slider and this adds a color stop on the left end and on the right end. The left end is highlighted. I'll come down to the swatches panel here and I'm going to choose the CMYK color 40, 70, 150. I'll click on it and that color is applied to the first color stop. Well, I want the same color on the far right end, so I'm going to double click on that color stop and I'll choose this same dark brown. Now I'll add another color stop right at the center by double clicking under the midway point of the gradient slide and I'll choose this light brown color. It's CMYK 2540650. When you're creating this type of a gradient for the frame effect, you want to make sure that you have your darker color on the far left and the far right side of the slider and a lighter color in the center. Now I'll just click on the artboard to close out the swatches panel and I'm going to change this value to 50 so that my light color stop is right in the center. Now we see that the gradient color has been applied to the frame, but I still need to change the attributes of the gradient. I'm going to leave the type setting at the linear gradient, but I am going to change the stroke setting. We'll come to the far right corner and apply the gradient across the stroke. And then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard so that you're able to see the results. And I end up with a nice smooth look. Now there is a little white line that goes across the bottom right corner and that's not a concern because if I come up to view and I change this to the over print preview, you'll see that it's just a matter of the preview I have setting on my computer. But I'm going to go ahead and change that back, remove the over print preview because it slows things down for me. I'm going to close out the gradient panel and I'll move our first frame over to the left. Then I'll hold down the Option key and drag out a copy. For this second frame, I'll keep the color scheme. I just need to make an adjustment to one of the gradient settings. So I'll get the Gradient Tool, Keyboard Shortcut G, and press the Return key to open up that gradient panel. This time I'm going to change the type to the radial gradient. I'll click here and then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and you can see we have another really nice frame effect. I'll close the gradient panel, then I'll hold down the option key and drag out another frame for the third example. For this frame, I'm going to add an additional stroke that also has the gradient applied to it. So I'll come over to the Properties panel in the Appearance area and click on this ellipsis to open the Appearance panel. I'm going to slide this 
over to the left and you'll see I have this little thumbnail which is a direct representation of the object which I have selected on my artboard. I see that I have a 30 point stroke and I can tell from the thumbnail that the radial gradient is applied. I can also see that there isn't a fill color. Well, if I come all the way down to the bottom of the appearance panel and click on the left icon, I'm able to add a new stroke. Illustrator will copy the stroke that I already had. It's going to give it the color and the size, but it won't apply the different attributes of that gradient. So I end up with a 30 point stroke that is on top of my original 30 point stroke with those gradient attributes I just added. I can't see it on the artboard because they're both the same size. So what I'll do is while the new stroke is selected, I'm going to get the gradient tool, keyboard shortcut G, and press the return key to open up the gradient panel. And I see that the radial gradient is applied, but I need to come back and apply the gradient across the stroke. So I'll click on this icon and close out this panel. And what we end up with is a frame that looks like our second example. However, if I come to the stroke that is underneath the stroke we see and I change the size of it, I'm going to type in 50 points here and then press the return key and I'll close out the appearance panel and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. And here are the results. We have a rectangle with two strokes on it instead of one, and the gradient attributes are applied to both of them to give us this effect. Now, after I've gone to the trouble of creating these different effects, I'd like to be able to use them over and over again in different objects down the road. So I'm going to turn them into graphic styles. I'll go up to Window and down to Graphic Styles. I could also have used the keyboard shortcut Shift F5. This opens up the Graphic Styles panel and we see there are a few graphic styles which come with Illustrator. We're going to add three more here. I'll select our first frame and come down to the bottom of the graphic styles panel and click on the new graphic style icon, this little square with a plus sign in it just click and we see our first frame here. And if I double click this, I can actually give it a name. I'm going to type in single frame and say OK. Now I'll select our second frame, come back over, click on the new graphic style icon and double click on the thumbnail and I'll type in double frame and say OK and then select the third frame click on the new graphic style and double click it to change this name and I'm going to put triple frame and say OK. Now come down to the bottom left corner of the graphic styles panel where I have the graphic styles libraries menu. I'll click down with my mouse to reveal the entire library, but I'll come to the very top and click on save graphic styles. Here I'm given an opportunity to give a name to these styles which I've added and I'm going to type in frames and then click save. Now I can close the graphic styles and then I can create a new document and I'll be able to access my frame graphic styles in this document and any future ones that I open up. I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and I'm going to drag out an ellipse and then I'll open up the graphic styles panel, keyboard shortcut Shift F5. Now, initially, we don't see the graphic styles which we added, but I'll come down to the bottom left corner again, click and hold, and come down to User Defined, and here I have frames. And when I click here, there are the three frames which we added, and I can click on any of them, and they'll be applied to my object. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about applying gradients to strokes. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel right now while you're thinking about it and press the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.